So to begin with, uh, I offer pedals like this in buffered bypass or true bypass. Let me briefly explain how you can tell which one your pedal is. If you switch the pedal off, that's what we mean by bypassed. Then unplug the power. Um, and if you can still hear your guitar signal coming through the amplifier, it's true bypass. If unplugging the power mutes your signal, it means it's buffered. And that's because there's an active component in there, like an op amp or a transistor. And when you remove the power, you turn off the component and therefore your signal won't pass through. So why do we use buffers? Whenever we're connecting two things together in the guitar world, it's actually providing um, a relationship between two items. So if you plug a guitar into a pedal, um, the pedal can have an effect on the guitar and the guitar can have an effect on the pedal. Uh, of course, it could be one pedal into another, it could be a pedal into an amplifier. Every single one of these is a separate relationship. So if we had a guitar and an amp and one cable, that is one relationship. If we instead put a pedal in between, the guitar no longer sees the amp, it only sees the pedal. The word which we're going to be um, using a lot in this video is impedance, which sounds scary, but you already know what it is. Uh, if I was running across the garden and the kids grabbed onto my ankles, they would be impeding me. So what you can expect is that I'm going to give a worse performance and waste energy. And that's exactly what happens when we mismatch uh, impedances with uh, electronics in the guitar world. So I've got a really simple visualization here for what a buffer does. It's going to be a simple graph. On this axis, we have impedance, low impedance, high impedance. On this axis, we have frequency, low frequencies to high frequencies. So this corresponds to bass, middle and treble. Our buffer is going to look like that. It has a low impedance, a low output impedance, and it is fixed. It does not vary, which means that down at our bass frequencies, our middle frequencies, and our treble frequencies, the impedance stays the same. Why is this important? Let's look instead at the impedance straight off the electric guitar. So this applies to any magnetic pickup, any traditional, typical, normal electric guitar pickup. Um, so humbuckers, P90s, single coils, overwound, underwound, vintage, modern, stacked, noise cancelling, they're going to exhibit this. So you can see this is not a fixed impedance anymore. This is what we call a variable impedance. Not only that, but it's a high impedance. Our buffer was low impedance down here, we've gone up and it now is variable. The highest impedance is now at the highest frequency. The lower impedances are at the lower frequencies. You can see that our middle frequencies sit somewhere in between the two. Now, let's imagine we plug that into a tube amp. So I'm going to get my very sophisticated impedance modelling device, which is another piece of A4 paper. And I'm going to start bringing it down to here. So what this piece of paper represents is the input impedance of roughly of a guitar tube amplifier. As you can see, it's fixed. It doesn't vary. And you can see it's also a very high impedance device. What this means is it provides an ideal match for an electric guitar because the piece of paper is not impeding our line and the line ultimately represents our guitar signal across all the frequencies. However, if we were to plug our guitar into a very long cable or a big pedal board with lots of little cables, we will increase the impedance of our guitar signal. Now, if we plug that same guitar into that same amplifier, we have a different scenario. We are now impeding our signal only in the upper frequencies, which is why with an impedance mismatch, you typically hear things sounding dull, muddy, lifeless. They might lose definition or sparkle. So remember, this piece of paper represents the input impedance of our tube amp. It's back to the height it was. Our original guitar signal was fine. If we increase the impedance too much of that signal, 
we have our first issue. In order to avoid this happening, in order to avoid our signal being compromised, we can plug our guitar into our buffer. So you remember it has a low impedance and it's fixed. Let's imagine we connect our buffer to our amp with a very, very, very long cable and we increase its impedance. Now let's plug that back into our tube amp. I'm gonna bring this piece of paper back in to represent the input impedance of the tube amp. You can see that in this scenario, we are still a long way off damaging our tone at any frequency, right up to the uppermost sparkly treble, the fairy dust frequencies, we are protected. So you could see a buffer as an insurance policy on your guitar tone. Um, in these scenarios, it will help avoid losing, in particular, high frequency information. This guarantees the most efficient transfer of the signal from one place to the next. So why don't we all use them all the time? Let me redraw our original electric guitar impedance with no buffer. So as you remember, it's a high impedance line and it has a variable impedance. Instead of plugging it into a tube amp, which is a nice high impedance device like this, let's imagine we plug it into a low impedance device like a vintage germanium fuzz pedal, which has a lower impedance. So I'm lowering the piece of paper to simulate that lower impedance because if you remember this axis is impedance, we have lows down here and highs up here. So I'm dropping the impedance lower than our tube amp was. And you can see what's happened here. We've impeded our guitar signal substantially. It has a very similar effect to using a very long cable and plugging it into a tube amp. You can see that we've ended up with a, a, a significant amount of impedance to our, in particular, our highest frequencies. Uh, the, impedance, the amount of impedance actually reduces as we come down the frequencies. But at the top, that is going to be very noticeable and we're going to end up with um, quite a dark sound. We typically enjoy that sound. Uh, lots of people still now use vintage germanium pedals. And also the designers obviously knew this was happening because in those days they had electric guitars with the same type of magnetic pickups that we use now. And they had the same guitar tube amps as we use now. So they were aware of this and they heard it. And to some extent that was balanced out by adding some brightness, adding some more volume um, as much as they could. Uh, so in this scenario, there is an impedance mismatch. We are aware of it, but we still enjoy it. And the pedal was designed to be used in this way where we plug our electric guitar straight into a vintage germanium style pedal. This is where we meet our first issue with the buffer. Let's redraw our buffer impedance. It's fixed and it's low. Let's now grab our impedance device again and let's come all the way down to simulate a vintage germanium pedal. Now you might think there's no issue here because we're not impeding our signal anymore, but that's what the issue is. We know already that the pedal was to some extent designed to balance out the issues of having our, our guitar signal impeded in the higher frequencies. So we um, no doubt the engineers would have added some level, some volume and some brightness. And the result in this scenario, plugging a buffer in between your guitar and a vintage germanium pedal the result is likely to be a brash, harsh sound. It will not sound uh, what we would call vintage or warm. It's likely to sound overhyped, sizzly, um, and probably quite harsh on the ears. This is the biggest issue you're going to likely face with the buffer. In a blindfold test, you should be hard pushed to tell if your guitar is plugged straight into a tube amp or if it's going into a tube amp via a buffer. But in this scenario, you will tell very, very quickly. So pedals to watch out for that have a low impedance, which um, are likely to sound worse if you use a buffer in front of them. You have things like the fuzz face, the germanium fuzz face, either vintage or um, reproduction. 
you have things like the Range Master treble boosters, which does include the Bigfoot treble booster. The treble booster and the treble booster mini have a low impedance and they were designed with this effect in mind. So if you were to use a buffer, you're going to get an issue. However, uh, I also do build some passive pedals, which do not use power, uh, no power supply, no battery. I do the Octopus, the Trouble Booster Uno, and the Yak Face Mini EQ pedal. These have a very, very low input impedance, incredibly low, because they don't use any active circuitry. And what you're going to experience if you plug one of those into your guitar is an incredibly quiet signal. It will barely resemble um, your guitar sound. So what you do need to do in that instance is connect the Bigfoot passive pedals using a buffer. They were always designed to be an impedance match for a buffer and not directly from an electric guitar. Uh, 